Welcome, this is our Ripples of Success interview. I'm so glad to have Michelle Butt here. Uh, you are doing some very cool things in your business. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about sort of who you are, what you do. You are a face expert. And so we wanna know a little bit about that. And then we had a very cool conversation about ending out the year and what do we do and how does it work? And I thought that might be a cool place for us to start today. So will you tell us a little bit about you and your business? Absolutely. So I am a facial intelligence expert and holistic life and business coach. So really what that means is that I use the face as the platform for understanding uh, other people, how to connect with them, communicate with them, how to get the best out of people using what your features are telling yourself in the mirror and the world about who you are and how you do things. And that is the platform upon which my coaching and my programs are all built around. Very cool. I saw you speak at an event last year, uh, the Dion Thompson's event, 100 Women on mm -hmm. Fire. And uh, it was very cool. You talked about how you, like what you can learn from people's faces and what you can, and as you said, from your own face as well, and mm -hmm. then use that information as sort of how you guide the coaching. Is that how you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Love mm -hmm. that. I love that. So we got talking about, you know, we're both business owners. Um, Michelle's got a, a Facebook group that is doing well. Way to go. Over 300 members. Woo -hoo. Yeah. I on know. your post yesterday. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and you are, um, You've been talking to people about sort of what's coming up. You know, we're into into October now, so we're moving into the end of the year. So, tell me a little bit about what you have, sort of what you're doing in conversation with your people around sort of the and year end push. Yeah, well, you know, in especially in the facial intelligence work, there is a huge. Um, there's a huge intention and concept around seasonality and that our life has seasons, our business has seasons, we have seasons, and um, that things flow in a natural kind of order. And because we are part of nature and um, within nature, then taking cues from that kind of natural, the way nature flows is, um, is very important. So, you know, we don't go straight from winter to summer, although seasons in between may seem shorter or longer. There is this, you know, winter to spring to summer to fall to winter again. And so when I'm working with people, I want them to understand what season the part of the world they're in is in, but also what season they are in. <laughs> and so because we work in years, the last quarter is kind of, you know, the season of taking stock and looking at the harvest. So what did you do for the bulk of the year and what's still left to be done and what's still, or what can you refine now as you start preparing the, you know, the fields for the next, you know, for, for winter quiet. And then the next, next, the next season. season. Hang so, on two seconds, Michelle, because I, hmm. I need to close my windows. I don't know what my husband's doing, but it's very loud. <laughs> some project of some sort. All right. I don't know if you could hear it, but it's like, he, I don't know what he's doing, but it was very loud. <laughs> so. Um, so that's kind of what I, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, it's neat, you know, when we got talking, I was, you know, you were saying that you were doing this sort of um, uh, little program to sort of help people it sort of through the the year end push kind of thing, and I it's funny what you just said about the seasons and about where we are and so on. That so resonates with me. Um, uh, we've actually sort of disconnected ourselves from the 
the year and the quarters and the 30, 60, 90, and all mm -hmm. of that very sort of masculine approach to business. We're all very good at it in over here in Triad. We're very good at the whole masculine thing. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we really wanted to create a, a more, we wanted to find places where we could insert the feminine energy. And so we've been working um, on the moon cycles and then we, uh, so we have, we have periods, which is new moon to new moon, and then four periods makes a cycle and four cycles makes a draft because it's about 15 months, which is how long it takes to gestate a draft. So <laughs> that's how we created ours. So we've sort of pulled ourselves out of the calendar in order to give ourselves the space that you're talking about. The, you know, mm -hmm. so that we've got, you know, instead of 30, 60, 90, we have essentially almost four months in our cycle, which just gives us that breathing room to be able to get projects complete and move things forward. And it, and it pulls us out of that sort of old, a very structural, tactical approach. And it, and I love what you're saying because you, what you're talking about is is actually the same thing, just from a, a little bit different perspective. Um, yeah, I'm so glad. And I, oh, thank you. And and you know, I think there are some concepts around time and timing because we are kind of in a time space re reality. But I think what what approaching goals or projects or just anything from this concept of seasons does is it helps us to understand um, the real, the, the reality of how things actually uh, come to fruition. They don't just do that. Right. Um, and that um, as well as letting ourselves off the hook a little bit when we are told to make like a big lofty goal and then you don't get there or you don't get there in that, oh, you can have a 10K month next month kind of, you know, right. rah, rah yeah. Um, yeah. thing that we see all the time because that is not how nature works. And we are born of nature. We are part of that. And so we work the same way, despite the fact that as human beings, we think that we can circumvent a lot and, and change yes. things. We can do some of that. But you know what? A, a seed is in the ground all through winter and it just starts to come out in the spring and then it blossoms at the right time. And, um, and so we kind of have to, like I really encourage the people that I work with to say, let's, let's watch this creation grow in its time with the right attention. So you don't just pop a seed in the ground and never water it, never fertilize it, you know, it just doesn't, <laughs> with the right attention and intentions and then it'll be what it's meant to be. And you can have some idea of what that is. But even if it's not exactly what you thought it was, if it still bears fruit, it's still a pear tree. <laughs> Do yes, you know what I mean? It's still right. doing its job. And every time you learn more about that tree, then you learn how to make it stronger and, you know, all the things. So it bears more fruit next time next season so that really is the way I like people to approach goals and things yeah, I love that because we are as you said we're you know in the harvest time so there's you know all this work that we've done during the season and we're in this harvest time and then there's a fallow season right we mm -hmm. need to rest and this is I think we're not very good at that in our culture is taking that that time to slow down to rest to have some fallow time and you know it's just it's very it's it's very much against our sort of societal expectations right that good puritan work ethic right? mm. <laughs> to uh, to take that that time out and it's really important when you're following seasons it it creates that space for sure yeah and it's not even just the rest it's also the refining and the editing yeah. of, you know what, okay, so here, here's what the harvest was. And it was, you know, a hundred bales, but we expected a thousand. So why is that? Let's look at what happened. Or it's a thousand and we thought we'd get a hundred. Okay, what did we do really right? So, you know, it's this editing and refining the vision 
as we rest, like as we move into the quiet of the rest, that really sparks the new, the new seed, the new project, the and new that space idea. space for creativity inside mm -hmm. of the observation and the assessment. And then that, like you said, it sparks that next mm -hmm. iteration. Very cool. Yeah. We've been talking about iteration a lot um, over the last couple of weeks uh, because of the work we do around e-learning and people think they have to get the thing done exactly the right way the first time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is to your point is it, it's, it can't possibly be perfect the first time because you no. it doesn't matter what you're creating until you put it out in the world you actually don't have enough data to to know whether it's right or not whether it's an e-learning or a coaching program or a a book or you know, whatever it is that you're putting out in the world this willingness to not be perfect to not even seek perfection right to put it out so that we can see what the response is and, and, and then create that space to do that. Yeah. And, and allowing ourselves to be, to know that the version is not going to be the final version and that's okay yeah. because, you know, we've got iPhone, what, 13 now every year, Apple's saying we've upgraded, we've upgraded. They're not afraid to put out something that they know they're going to upgrade because by nature of people having it and using it, new ideas, new ways of doing things, new technology is going to come along that's going to make that thing even better. But we tend, you know, in our in small the small business space and as women, we tend to think, okay, well, if it's not perfect, we're not we're putting it out. Or when we finally put it out, okay, that's it. I never have to do another program again. And right. it's no, we're constantly like one begets the other. And um and I think that that again kind of speaks to the seasonality. You don't see plants just grow once and then never grow again. Okay, we we bloomed once. I'm out. We don't need next year. We're not coming back. We're done. So or or just keep using what you used last year. You know those apples are still good. So um, we we have to get used to staying constantly in motion yeah. um, to grow and expand, but not to be tuckered out. You know, just yeah. to keep following the flow. I love that. So I'm completely changing topics for a moment because for some reason this popped into my head. Um, you've been uh, you've been growing your business and mm -hmm. uh, I know you started your community and that's go been going well. Oh, I would love to know like where did you get stuck and how did you unstick yourself? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, for me and the way that I'm designed, where I get stuck is when I um, have to focus strongly in more than one place. So when there's a lot of family stuff, because I'm, you know, mom first, then uh, sometimes focusing on the business gets, gets you know, there's less energy there and vice versa. And what I had to realize was, okay, is there a way that I can grow both and allow them both to thrive without one suffering or without me being completely depleted? And, um, and or do I, is it okay to build my life around, okay, when kids take priority, they take priority, but now you've got this machine over here that is, it can take care of itself for the time that you're taking care of them. And then they can take care of themselves for the time when you really need to be in here. And, uh, and so for me, finding that, that rhythm was the thing, because before it was all here, all here, all here, all here. And it, it was the way that it was supposed to be at that time. And so I had to let, allow myself to say that was okay. Sure. That was okay. And you know what, and the universe conspired to allow that to be okay. So if I'm focusing on my kids and my business is making less money this month, there were so many other contingencies that I had in place that I didn't have to worry that, oh my gosh, that means we can't pay our bills. Right. And, um, and so I was like, why are you getting upset by this? Why are you feeling guilty about this? You set your life up so that this could be your rhythm. 
And, um, and so once I let that go, then it was like, okay, now they're taken care of and business is thriving and, and bringing me so much joy. And then when they're around, then I can leave that on autopilot and it still thrives. And so, um, so that was my, I love that. And unsticking. A lot of people talk about balance and I don't, I just don't see balance as being a, a constructive goal. Um, I, someone talked to me about using harmony as mm -hmm. a, another uh, sort of metaphor, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you've got a uh, symphony, you've got all the different players and sometimes, you know, this part of the, the orchestra is really loud and the other ones are, are quiet and then they change. And if everyone was playing really loud all the time, it wouldn't be beautiful. Yeah. And I loved that. That really, like, it was like, oh, I can let the flow of my life and my business um, guide sort of where I'm putting my energy. And, and I love the idea of, you know, being, uh, having your business set up so that it can be on autopilot when it needs to be. Um, and your family, honestly, <laughs> like yeah. systems and structure. You know, <laughs> and go. that really makes a difference. We've been uh, talking a lot about, you know, our goal for our clients is to help them have a successful life with a successful business in it, mm -hmm. right? To have that, you know, a calm, successful business inside of a life instead of your business being your life, which is, I think, what happens with a lot of solopreneurs, particularly, you know, it sort of takes over the whole world. Yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes in, in it's, for me, it's also the, that same kind of cycle thing. Sometimes my business is my life, but it, yep. but if it stops being that there are other things that can take its space. Um, and it's, it's when you rely on just the one thing all the time and you don't make room for anything else, then it's like, you know, when you become an empty nester and all you did was raise your kids all the time, then you're just like, who am I? What am I? What, you know, what's my purpose? And so if, if the business is part of your purpose, then it can be. But if it's, if it went away tomorrow and you didn't have any other understanding of who you were and what other things could be part of your purpose, right. then you could feel really lost. For sure. For sure. So you've got um, a something cool coming up, right? Around helping people through this seasonal shift and, and doing their harvest. Do you want to mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what you've got coming up? Yeah, actually, well, we, I, I'm partnering with a good friend of mine called, her name is Sarah Sparks, and she's kind oh, of an Sarah, intuitive. Sarah, that's so yeah, fun. I, I love small worlds. There. Okay, sorry. Yeah, 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 so she's an intuitive uh, coach. She does soul work, and I do face work. Um, so we are bringing our two niches together, and um, uh, we are doing, uh, sorry, my doorbell rang, um, <laughs> of five week or six week, I believe it's six weeks, um, kind of intensive called self. And it's all about soul elements, which are kind of the foundations of this natural rhythm that I was talking about, leveling up finale. So it's kind of helping people level up into the end of this year. And it's all about kind of answering the questions that we get all the time around the things we were talking about, purpose and goals. and um, and, you know, I always get, who am I, you know, what am I doing wrong and how do I fix it? Like, what does my face say about that? <laughs> and she, you know, her questions are, you know, who am I like from a soul perspective and um, what's my purpose and, and how do I achieve that? And so we thought if we take the soul and we put it and the body work together, the face work, then we could really help people understand that refining of of this year that harvest thing and set them up for a really nice way to start the new year so love that, that. yeah love that well we'll make sure that there's some information about how people can find you in uh, down below the video mm -hmm. uh, if you uh if you are interested in reaching out to michelle um, yeah. i love having these conversations with entrepreneurs who are doing cool things particularly people who are have had, you know, 
the ups and the downs, right? That's where we get the most magic and the places where we can come together and see, you know, how do we find our place where we can, where we can create the most fun, the most magic, the most um, opportunity in our business. So I'm so glad you came and hung out with me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I love it too, because I love to see, you know, similar thoughts just expressed through different lenses and just knowing, okay, we're all on the right track and we, we bring in who we resonate with, but we're all helping people to move to that next step in their journey. So I love that. You bet. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you.